All right, so I'm with Linda Grindy, my grandmother. I'm gonna ask her a few questions. So, Linda, please tell me about your childhood, family, and school life. Uh, I was born in Duluth in 1950 and went to school down there through halfway through second grade when we moved up here because my dad was transferred to the Clay Boswell plant. And I don't know, we had a good, good childhood, I guess. We did a lot of things as a family. We took a lot of trips. Every weekend we had to go back to Duluth because my mom missed her sisters and playing cards. But other than that, I went to Forest Lake School, middle school, and high school all in Grand Rapids, and well, it was good. All right. So, would you consider yourself old? Not particularly. Okay. At what age um, did you notice you were at least getting older, would you say? I would say, not really, well, probably when I was around 70, um, that was when I quit working, and I think that made me, gave me more time to realize that I was getting older. I had more time to think about it, too. Okay. So, about five years. All right. Most recently since January or April of this year when I took my fall, but, Yeah. Not good. Okay. So, um, what is the most important historical event or period that you lived through, and how did that influence you personally? Um, first thing that comes to mind was I was 13 in my um, English class when um, JFK was shot, and we, we didn't know. They just... All of a sudden, all this started coming over the loudspeakers, and no one knew what was going on, what they were talking about or anything. Well, we finally learned what it was, and then when I got home, I found my mom sitting there just bawling. It was it was a hard time for everyone, you know, just... I don't know if there's ever um, a crisis like that that was broadcast so quickly, you know, through the whole country, actually. Mm-hmm. But that, that was a bad one. Then we went down to visit my grandpa, and he was the worst case than my mom. But as far as crying and, you know, he kept going on and on. And why did they take a nice young man like that? Why didn't they take me and I'm just an old guy? So that affected me a lot, I guess. Okay. And what year was that in again, do you remember? It was okay. November of 63. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so what is the most significant change you have seen in how people conduct their everyday lives? Technology. Everyone's walking around with their nose in a, uh, in their phone or computer. They're not looking around outside. and They're missing a lot by not paying attention to mm-hmm. anything but these darn things here. Gotcha. I said darn. Okay. Um, what have been the best years of your life so far and what are your plans for the future hmm I don't know all, all the years are good you but, can come back to that too if you want yeah you I can't I mean you know there, each, each time is each part of your life is different but they're and for the future, though, I just want to get this hip healed so I can get back out of my kayak. That's my goal right now. Mm-hmm. But It's a good goal to have. Okay, that's good. Anything else? Nope. All right. How are young people today different from when you were their age? Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I couldn't even think about this one a little bit. I don't want to insult you. <laughs> no, you can go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you, you guys are the exception, though. It just, it's not the kids so much, it's the parents, the way they are so combative and want the kids to, their kids to be best, and 
You know, they're, it's like so many parents are dance moms. You know, if they either are a hockey mom or anything like that, they don't let the kids be kids. Mm-hmm. So that's, there's, I don't know. Okay. Have you experienced any negative attitudes or discrimination because of your age? Please explain. Negative? Nope. Positive? Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, just every, I mean, no matter, that's one thing that I just noticed yesterday when I went out to eat with my friends that, you know, there's, um, each time I try to get in and out of a doorway or even just out of my van or if I drop something or whatever, young people are there to help. Mm -hmm. I actually had two young guys fighting over who was going to get the door and the girl opened up instead, so that was a good deal. (laughs) Nice. Yes, but that's... No, I I can't really think of anything negative, thank God. I'd lose it. Uh Uh-huh. But... That's a good problem to have. I know, that's what I figure. Gimpy. Yeah. Anything else? No, sir. All right. How do you take care of yourself physically and mentally? Do you exercise regularly? Why or why not? I do now. I I have um, been kind of a halfway exercise person, I guess. I I figure I'm, I've been stayed active for my age, always. But now it's not as easy. But now I'm I am more um, determined. Mm-hmm. Right now I'm exercising regularly and even more. And I'm looking forward to getting back to the Y and continuing with swim class in the fall, and getting on their exercise machines. As soon as I can, well, I guess I could do it now. So that's that. Mm-hmm. Good. So, what words of wisdom would you give young people to help them prepare for their old age? Don't do it. Stay young. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's just a fact of life. You can't do anything about it except take care of yourself. Stay active mentally and physically. And don't don't get all tied up in these things, you know, like... That's what I worry about more with young people. They're going to even be able to um, change a, a um, spark plug in the car. Mm-hmm. Or are they going to be able, of course, they could, all they got to do is turn on their TikTok and they can learn or their YouTube, I guess. But I don't know. There's there's more to, well, just today with um, Microsoft losing everything, you know, there's you know, there's a place for computers, but there's also a place for stuff to be stored up in your brain. I mean, it's like the whole world's going to come to an end because they can't do anything because of the, the computers being down. And this isn't just in the, this is all worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know, we rely too much on things other than our own bodies and our own minds. I would say so. There. Definitely. My opinion. What was your first job? What was working like then compared to now? I'm not working now, so I don't really know. Or your most... Uh, the last job you had before you stopped working then? Um... So my first job was when I was like 15 helping. I was doing, I was actually the dishwasher at Forest Lake Lodge because my mom was a cook there. Not just a part-time job, but I enjoyed it. I didn't make much money, but I enjoyed it. Then after that, I went to A&W. They were only open for summer months. Worked there for three years as a cook. And when I quit there I was making 85 cents an hour and I was one of the highest paid people wow I'd been there after three years but and then um, now I don't know it it didn't seem like it was as much about the money back then you know for the um, I mean whoever's working wants to make some money but it just seems like the 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 owners the business owners put too much emphasis on how much money they're making and it's even just working at, you know, where for all those years, of almost 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, it changed a lot. It was not, it wasn't fun. It wasn't like a family. It wasn't, it wasn't like the company really cared for you as much as they used to when they were smaller. But a job's a job. 
Oh. Okay. What are some important lessons you've learned about raising children? Don't have them. Don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, I don't know. It's it's a fine balance. You have to learn to be there for them and to give them guidance. But then you have to let them um, learn, you know, do things on their own. Once they get to be teenagers, you don't have any choice anyhow. They just do what they want anyhow. But, if, if you know, we tried to um, do things, you know, that we all would enjoy. Some of the, my favorite memories are kids have been brushing their teeth in the lakes, huh. you know, when we were camping and stuff, and um, just just silly things, you know, taking being out on Sugar Lake and this storm comes, and I thought that Grandpa was forgot to shut the motor off, and he'd shut it off halfway across the lake with just the wind, and, you know, the girls, like your mom's swimming suits, float way down the um, beach, and I'm underneath the car, the truck with um, Tammy, who was a baby at the time, and just stuff like that. You know, the, the, it's not where you go; it's who you do, who you're with. That mm-hmm. They say, so just to, to have fun, enjoy yourself. Okay. When was the first time you learned about physical therapy, and what it is? Well, of course, I've learned more since April you know, myself, but, um, 2002, when Grandpa hurt his shoulder when we were out in the four-wheeler, um, he, he was so, he couldn't do anything with his left arm, and of course he was left-handed, you know, and then we just, I went, brought him to the clinic, and he didn't like what they told him there, you know, the first thing was, well, you're going to have to have rotator cuff surgery. And he's like, well, I'm going to hold off on that. So then he went to see someone else. Same thing without taking an x-ray or, you know, even asking him that many questions. And he said, well, I'm going to try something else. But if I it doesn't work, then I'll have to come back. I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Well, then he went to the chiropractor that I went to. And she did as much as she could, but she couldn't do it. So then she referred him to a um, physical therapist. And he couldn't even hold the one and a or half pound um, weight when he first got there. But by the time, like I said, by the time he was done doing that and then kept on working with them, built up, built up, and then he just continued after he got home and he he was back to normal. No surgery needed. Mm-hmm. So I just, I learned a lot then and I've learned a lot more now about occupational therapy. I didn't know what that was at all until I you know, took my digger with my hip. With my hip. Mm-hmm. That's how I learned, secondhand and firsthand. Okay. Well, that concludes the interview. Is there anything right. else you'd like to add? No, you wouldn't let me say any house, so I'll just... <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. Nice to meet you, young man. Nice to meet you, too. We'll talk again. All right.